And down to something a little new, uh, the bridge port. I pretty much put it in place, hooked up power, grounded it into a piece of metal, and it's been sitting um, basically until I'm ready to use it. But uh, it needs uh, to be cleaned up and um, <laughs> a bunch of stuff. And also, do so does all my um, organization of all my uh, attachments and tips and everything. Uh, for that so I figure uh, for this evening and, and maybe tomorrow I will take some time and uh, start doing that so that when I do need it it's uh, you know up and ready to roll and uh, I'm more familiar with it and familiar with what I got so this is what this video is going to be about uh, it's, I'm trying to think where I left off I don't think I've shown much of anything on this but yeah out of the way I got a light set up so that it can kind of paint over both machines at the same time and it's got a magnifying glass in it so my older eyes I wanted to show you I got an attachment I don't think what I do with it probably sitting in it that's why I got a the lathe runs um, it's called uh, M2 MT2 attachments, which is pretty much all the stuff you've seen up here, all the drill, all the uh, drill chocks and the um, arbors that you see up here that go on the tailstock run an MT2 size, there it is, size uh, attachments, we're going to call it. So every implement, let's take a drill chuck, is meant to fit in the tailstock like, yeah, like so. And the way they operate, is uh, they're just like a press fit, a taper fit, and then on the, on the end of them, uh, they lock into a channel like that, so they can't turn. That's the principle they work on. And to get the thing out of there, you if you turn the chuck all the way backwards in, you give it a pop, it actually just pushes itself right off, so there's a, there's a, a center post in the middle of it that pops it off or sometimes you can just tap with a brass hanger, hammer and it comes out anyway all these attachments that are up there there's probably I don't know dozen or so up there the to make the bridge port or the mill work on that stuff all these attachments uh, are called R8 this is the size of what's inside this R8 uh, collets that's an R8 collet, and then there's different sizes for different bits that you put inside of it. Um, I'll get into that later. But the way this setup is operated on is there's a draw bar in the middle of the machine, and then there's a key. The key lines up to that channel. That's what keeps this from spinning in the chuck. And then this thing in here is called the draw bar. So you back this off with a wrench about a turn. You whack it with a, uh, a brass hammer or uh, some kind of soft mallet and it just, that taper just pops right out of the socket, then you unthread it and it falls out. Well, to make those attachments fit this machine, the outside of this is an adapter I got on uh, eBay, and this adapter was, actually wasn't very expensive, I think it was like 15 bucks. Um, makes it so that you can thread up into the machine, just like uh, the collets are, so the outside is the uh, the RA collet, but the inside is the MT2, which matches which matches these guys. And now that, when it's, the chuck is up in there, if you just give it a tap, will stay in there. So that allows me now to have all these drill chucks that will fit on my mill. Do they make them for this? Yes, but they're expensive. And uh, I would spend as much on the chucks as I did on the whole machine. So, uh, although it's not a perfect, uh, solution to it it does work the only drawback is the chuck can pull out so if you're say backing out of work you're trying to get your your you know, you're, you're drilled into something and it's tight and you're pulling back out this can pop out of and there's nothing holding it it's not threaded up in there it's just a pressure fit so that's that guy as you can see it's now it's on there <laughs> I'm not going to get it off one handed but uh, again if that's up inside the chuck you just give it a uh, whack with a uh, soft hand it'll pop itself back out of there so so I'm gonna start uh, gathering all my bits and goodies and pieces and crap that are laying around I, I printed off um, 
the owner's manual for it. Although it's fairly small, but uh, it is there, so. It just tells you about all the, the cleaning and its stroke and how much capacity it has to it. So you can find a better page with the pictures and diagrams. But you're just going to have to take my word for it, aren't you? Tells you how to lube, where to lube, that kind of thing. It doesn't tell you how to operate it, it just pretty much just tells you. Uh, these, it's all the, the maintenance and handles and what the torques and stuff are, the, that kind of stuff. Alright, you're going to have to take my word for it. Anyway. So this is some of the parts, uh, the, the bits that I, I had received from uh, that big pile that I got from um, the machine shop that had uh, all the vices and the, the rotary table and all that and then it came with all the wrenches and whatnot. So anyway, also within that pile came a, a, a bunch of uh, end mills and cutters and you know just a, a little bit of all the leftover stuff that a shop has that they, uh, they move out. There's an MT2 right there with a uh, four flute right on it. So anyway, so I have to go through all that and then down in here, down in the drawers, I have a little bit of everything, but but as you'll see, that there'll be uh, those, again more to fit the. Um, that's more for the lathe. There is a plethora of end mills that, that need to be sorted, organized, figure out what I have and all that. And, and most of these guys are probably brand new. So uh, I want to take the time to try to set myself up so that, again, I know what I have and what I don't have. Reamers, cutters, these are fly cutters. I don't know how, if, I, if I have a setup for this, but this is uh, its own game in itself. I had enough of that. You get the idea. So I want to take all that stuff, organize what I got, and uh, clean up. Actually, over in my drill section, there is more. Let's see. I have more over here again that's uh, just a miscellaneous pile of different bit bits and whatnot and so we're gonna go from there again I'll keep repeating myself and uh, clean it all up so I'm gonna shut you off and I'll turn you back on we start getting something going all right so this is the aftermath we got piles uh, not quite sure which way to uh, organize the stuff where whether I want to do it by you know what they cut how many flutes so for now, I'm just going to group it to what the, uh, again, like I said, the, the call-up size is and kind of go from there. But I think what I can do is leave them, I want to put them up in boxes and make them so that that side is up on all of them. So they're standing straight up in a, in a container. And you can just look right down on them and you can kind of see what they all are at the same time. At least that's what I'm thinking now. And generally, they kind of, you know, they're grouped by size anyway as they go up. I'm missing... Uh, Two collets, no one collet. Uh, it's a really tiny one. I think I want to say it's an eighth. And I think there's one in between here. No, right here. Fifteen sixteenths, where there is not one. And then it was two quarter inches. So, so I think uh, I want to take and try to find some boxes that fit roughly that size I knew a little Home Depot shopping or whatever and uh, try to look for something that's more square on the side so the stuff kind of uh, stands more up and down something like this probably about half the size would be good and the more straight up and down it is the better it would be so I'm gonna look for like a eight pack or something and this stuff is all the different 
um, like adapters and whatnot. And I'm trying to find a combination that will run this drawer of um, cutters. And uh, again, I, I, we don't know much of the history where the stuff originated from. So, um, like, here's a cutter with a, a thread on it kind of matches up to them but it doesn't match up to anything I have I don't know what this uh, this uh, call it would be it's drawn in by thread but there's no key on it so it's for some other uh, you know more tape or eight whatever this is and uh, does that have a five on it right there anyway so um, I want to try to find a combination that is good so I wish there was something that would fit with, you know, the, its own kind of uh, shaft set up and then you can kind of spin the stuff right on. I'm not that familiar with any of this, so it's kind of a uh, a guessing game for me for what... Here's the other one. They're all threaded on. Um, and then there's larger ones, which I don't have anything for. Which I don't quite know what that would mount right on to. And what would be in the center, you know? Uh, uh, some other. Turn off that setup. No, that doesn't fit that. And we know how they call it sleeve in it. Then I said, well, good for that. <laughs> I didn't want to put um, too much of the stuff. I picked through it, but the stuff that I got from that uh, machine shop that uh, sold off the, all, all the thing in one package. You know, it's like the scrap drawer. So some of the stuff is iffy, some of it's broke, some of it's, you know. So I didn't want to put too much of that stuff in with here because everything in here was uh, you know, newer, next to new condition. So <laughs> then I could, you know, if I don't have it, then I can go dig down in there. So I decided to start cleaning the machine up instead. So I'm taking all the crap off of it, and uh, I'm gonna take the vise off, and I think I'm just gonna try washing it all down at first, clean all the crap out of it, and um, see if I can uh, uh, work on getting some of the play out of it. You know, get, bring it as close as I can. Wh whatever it's worn, it's worn, but you can make the best of it by you know just knowing what you can on it. So I should be able to get some uh, better response out of it. These are uh, grease fittings. Yes, a grease gun will fit on them, but they're not meant for grease. They're meant for whey oil, which uh, shoots through like veins underneath here. And what it does is it kind of pushes any debris that's in the in the grooves away. Where grease, it does the opposite. It kind of glues all the little tiny metal chips to it. So it kind of makes its own greasy Brillo pad underneath there by using grease. It actually does more. You know, harm than good. So uh, I'm gonna try my best to rinse all that out. I don't know if I want to take it apart. I don't know. I'm quite don't know yet. You know, I just, I just figure I clean it, start cleaning up the outside, and um, you know, slide them from side to side, clean the crap off of them, and uh, kind of go from there. And uh, if we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. So that's the plan I'm going. All right. So I'm uh, starting to clean it up. I just got some parts washer uh, solution, some brushes. I'm just starting to scrub. You know, scrub the main table down, all the crap that's in the cracks and. I'm going to start rocking it back and forth and cleaning it up both ways and getting all the crap out of it. I just want to show you what I was talking about with the grease. See all this grease that's packed in here? That's what we don't want. Here's that vein that it would come down and it would be with oil. The problem is that we get so much grease in it, the, the oil, it's hard to push the grease back out of it, you know? Uh, so you kind of have to kind of wash it to get, get it out of it, as far as I understand anyway. Uh, so I'm going to try again, as I said, rock it both ways, clean out what I can, and I'm going to try probably pushing some oil down in there and see if we can kind of get it to rinse out, but I may just have to take it all apart. I'm sure, again, I'm not sure how far I want to get into it, but, uh, you know, it's one of those ones you start, you start digging before you know it. <laughs> you got crap all over the place. But, uh, carry on. All right. So I got, um, the, uh, table, uh, Cranked back and forth a couple times, got underneath the parts washer, washed it all out uh, with the parts washing fluid, and I took um, one of the fittings off, and it's uh, like a pick in there. That's the, I'm saying it's all full of grease. The, um, I wonder if I can shoot it out with an air gun. 
I may try and uh, see if I can kind of get it to blow out at the ends of the veins here and then get kind of rinse it through with the uh, the thinner oil which is where is it what do I do with it anyway you'll see in a minute um, and then try to purge that through and start see if these will wash out without having to uh, take everything apart and uh, go from there and I'm not quite sure where it's going to blow out, if it's going to blow out, so I just threw a rag over the end of it, just so I don't shoot crap all over the bus, but... No. Boom! Not going to happen. So... I could probably maybe try to push it hydraulically with oil, if I could figure out some kind of setup. To push it through. Let's see. Alright, so to start off with, I had the wrong grease fitting. That is for the lower one, and it finally did blow air through it. And uh, the two for the top are back here. So I already blew the first one out, it was able to go. I figured I'd throw the camera back on, see if you can get the back one to go. What seems to work good is you put the grease, it's got a rubber nozzle on it, so it fits in the hole without leaking. And just crank it back and forth, and eventually it just kind of pushes the grease out. Has on the other ones anyway. Figure now if I can get air to go through it. If I'm gonna get air to go through it. I should be able to get oil to go through it now. So I'm gonna go figure out how to uh, try to clean up what's underneath it, and then um, then I'll try shooting some oil through it. I'm down into the bowels. So I, I was able to work out uh, all the slides and um, the ways and uh, get all the crap out of them and uh, get the whey oil in there. So that worked out pretty good. And now I'm just kind of like working with tweaking, getting all the play out of them. And uh, here I'm running this one back and forth. I took the screw out of the front and there's a cover plate that shift back and forth. So now you can see the bottom screw. And then uh, to bring your knee up and down is, is the other... The other one below it, but this is the main one right here. What I wanted to show you was uh, you see in a production machine. Uh, see what would show up better. See the see the line there, the hammer mark, and the hammer mark there. There's a bunch of other ones, but those are like they're like two real prominent ones. So this thing probably did whatever it did the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again for its uh, you know 30 years of its life. But it's a uh, 59. So what's that? Uh, 17 years, uh, 57 years old. So <laughs> it's it's allowed, but um, it's getting cleaned up pretty good. I think I'm just gonna take some air and blow all, any chips that are down in there, kind of like wash out that area, and um, use some carb cleaner, kind of rinse it all out, and then re-oil everything down in there too and that uh, gets a different the uh, kit that came with it came with a bunch of different stuff you know whey oil just for hence the ways and then I gotta do my homework again because we got spindle oil which and then we got the medium oil and then we got the yeah white lithium kind of grease and uh, I remember which one's for which. I'm not quite sure which. That, that I would think would probably be for the screws, but I want to do my homework on it before I put uh, that stuff on there. I got to look it all up. Um, but I'm still in kind of like the washing state, and uh, again getting a play out. So I ran that one in quite a bit, and that's um, there is play on the screw 
before it responds and then it's playing the table like it, if it wants to twist or not and that that's what I'm trying to get out of it and basically you try to make it so it's it's gonna be the loosest in the center no matter what but the two extremities you just want to make it so you set them up so you're able to get to them uh, it could have some drag on them but uh, the more drag you set it on the outside the tighter it is in the center uh, so yeah, you're just trying to find a happy medium there and I did and uh, you still lock it you can lock it anyway you know you, you turn the lock on and that takes the uh, it tightens it tightens it up where it is so, so what am I doing now <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go back to cleaning I guess the other adjustment I have to take is probably well here's the first one I'll show you it's got a screw right there so you're twerking that guy in and uh, tweaking twerking <laughs> and uh, basically essentially you got a wedge that uh, uh, either greatens or loosens the distance between these two and uh, yeah, that essentially takes the play out, and they're just two uh, tapered, two tapered six for the most part of it, uh, rubbing up against each other, and uh, the taper just takes the play out. I don't know. I don't know to explain it. <laughs> cool. All right, I'm going to go uh, clean. All right, so I think I left off with, uh, I was just uh, tightening up the dovetails on the, uh, X and Y axis to try to tighten those tables up and I was going in to do a little bit of homework for the evening to see about uh, getting some of the play out of the um, the it's called a it's called a nut underneath here is a, there's an X and a Y uh, that threaded shaft goes into and they get play in them they have adjustment to them and uh, anyway I'll get back to that in a minute I want to get this stuff up off the bench and kind of organized. So I went to uh, the stores and uh, yes, they were nice and uh, crowded for a Tuesday. And uh, I was trying to find something for storage like I talked about and uh, came up with two different ideas. One was just like a, a bake pan. Uh, it's probably the most straight up and down thing I was able to find. That was tough. I figured these will hold up pretty good. And then the other was just the, you know, uh, tackle box style organizers or hardware or organizers, whatever you want to call them. So, uh, I think uh, I'd rather have more than not enough and have to go back. I'd rather go back to return than not uh, have enough to get the project done. So, I think I'm going to start with uh, trying to load up all the small stuff in one of these and see how it works out. And then maybe we can step it up from there to the uh, larger ones and maybe the tins or I just don't know yet. So, I think that's where I am. I'm going to go and start organizing my hardware. Well, that took a lot less room than I expected. The whole thing fit in uh, one tray for the most part. So, which is good in, in a sort that it won't take that much uh, room on the shelf, but at the same time, I can still kind of see the tops of everything for what I want to do with them, you know? And then I, I just decided to kind of right around on the outside what sizes they were. And, uh, you know, a year from now, they'll probably all be mixed up. At least I, I gave it a valiant effort to start with. Uh, and I also looked online last night and uh, uh, they make arbors for this that will fit an R8, uh, uh, call it chuck, uh, not, it, it actually, yeah, I guess it is, no, it's not a call it, what would it be called? Just an arbor. That will um, uh, accept the different, uh, different type of uh, cutting uh, bits that I got and uh, I think the rest of them are underneath the plastic over there. So, let me order one or two of those. I'm going to look on eBay and see how much they cost and um, try to get one of each. One, one for, they look like they're all the same size thread and then uh, the ones that don't have threads just have an open hole in the center of them, basically what you see there. So I'd like to get uh, one of each of those for, uh, uh, make, make it so the, the, the tooling's useful, you know. So I'm going to go start uh, packing that sucker up on the shelf up there and uh, go maybe probably uh, back to cleaning up uh, and adjusting more on the bridge board itself. So I'm going to go get on that. So I decided to jump in to get rid of um, the worst play that is in the whole thing was um, the table uh, can get pushed in and out uh, about a hundred thousand. So it was a lot. So I, what they have is a brass, they call it a nut. Um, there's no, it, there's threads on the inside of it. I don't know if you guys can see, see that, yeah, that brass right there. Well, that's threaded. Um, 
and then it has a almost like a T there's another thread going across the top of it um, that does you know one's X one's Y well anyway they have adjustment in them and the light is just not quite illuminating there it does see that big screw and then there's a little piece of brass next to it the little other shiny piece of metal that little missing piece of that, that little piece of metal was another screw that was supposed to lock that screw down and that big screw that you see there was the adjustment for the play well the head is just missing on that other screw I'm not gonna go worry about trying to get in it but anyway I tightened that sucker down and uh, that was all the play all of it was right in there so now from forward and back there's nothing Well, uh, let's just say not nothing, but uh, a lot less than a hundred thousand before we go clunk, clunk, back and forth. So I am going to go uh, wheel that thing back in there and uh, clean up a little bit of crap on the end of it. Put it all back together and uh, see how we do as far as play. And again, you don't have to get it down to nil. You, you got you, you to gotta be aware of where the play is on it and always uh, when you're doing your cutting have your best way to say it yeah whatever direction you're going you already want to have the plate pushed out in that direction you always want to work uh, you know against uh, against the play uh, you want to take the slop up in the table and then cut into wherever you're cutting or, or have the table cut into the cutting tool uh, with the play already removed you know it's not like you're gonna go say okay I want a slot that's a hundred thousandths wide I'm going to go make a slot down the middle, 40 thousandths, and then I'm going to go 20 thousandths one direction and 20 thousandths another direction. You're not going to do that with the dial. You're, uh, I'm getting lost. <laughs> getting lost how to explain it. I know what I want to say, but it's just hard to explain. But uh, anyway, we're just trying to get as much of the slop out of here as possible, and uh, that's the intent. And uh, let me get this all put back together, and we'll have a better idea what we got. All right, so that one's all buttoned up in the front, and it has now about uh, about 12 degrees, between 10 and 15 degrees of slop, which was a lot better than 100,000. So uh, I think uh, factory, when it was new, was they tried to set it between five and seven, I think. So I'm not that far off. And I just wanted to show you more get a light on it there we go and there's the other screw that's what it's supposed to look like see how it's got the little screw jam in the big one from turning so we're going to go do the same for the other direction which right now i think let's lock it it's locked it's got let's go from 60 to 40. Eh, it's probably about 15 in that um let's go see if uh, i can improve on that a little bit 40 yeah about 17 degrees and from doing my homework last night i did find one other spot that uh needs to get oiled that not too many people are aware of and i don't even think it's uh, uh he referenced it as not even being in the manual but there is a uh, a lineup port right here you can see that arrow and uh there's oil nut Nut is the center, what they call the center of it, and actually two nuts is, you know, one one facing this way and one facing this way. And if you line those two up, you can actually take a set screw out of the center of the table, right down in there, and that will give you a port that you could actually uh, oil up, and uh, it will, there's like a reservoir up there that will um, hold oil and uh, drip it down over both screws back and forth and keep them it kind of goes from like one cavity around to the bottom of that there's another little hole in the bottom of that and then it drips into the lower one and I think I, I want to say you said it was six ounces of oil which uh, sounds like quite a bit but uh, I guess uh, too much is better than not enough it should, it'll just piss out the bottom of it worst case scenario so uh, I'm gonna go with that, that one taken care of too uh, I tightened that uh, setup up there that one did not you know improve as much as the other one did but it knocked it down to uh, we're gonna go from 160 to 150 eh, about 12 about 12 that probably about the same as the other one now so they're both pretty much matching 
what they got for play and again that that one wasn't really an issue to me it was more this one uh, we can grab the table and physically push it forward and back a tenth of an inch you know so all right so I'm gonna go fill that up cap it back off and finish tightening up my uh, my Gibbs and um, I think that might be about it oh, I still got to do the um, the knee there's a uh, you remove these little caps underneath here and you can adjust the knee uh, gib also to kind of take some slop out of it but uh, that one for the most part you just crank it to wherever you're gonna be and you just lock it down and then you you know tighten itself up there's no it's not like you're trying to work that while you're trying to cut something and then I just quickly hit all the oil caps up top and uh, filled them in oil and then all the pivots and etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. that's all kind of good and tight and ready to rock and roll and quiet but uh, kind of want to uh, index this thing and uh, dial it all in. But uh, to do that, you got to start with a flat surface. And uh, this surface, as you can see, is had its shears, its bangs and bumps and bruises and you know highs and lows. So I figure I'm going to go run over it with a sander and then I'm going to go run over it with a stone. But uh, I figure we'll go sander first. Just to knock all the high stuff off. Some guys go crazy as they start filling all the uh, past boo-boos in. I'm not going to get into any of that, but uh, you know, we're, just gonna, we're just trying to get it back in service. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to do was uh, kind of square up that head a little bit. And uh, you could tilt the head this way and this way. So you have, um, uh, for this parameter, you have four nuts. You just kind of crack them loose and then you have a like a worm gear on this one and you can you could fine tune it and then the the knot of the head if you lose these three and then you work with this one the same thing the worm gear you can kind of you know fine tune it and i just stuck a gauge in it not the best gauge in the world but it's what i have to work with it's one of those ones that are automatic magnetic stand well i took it off the magnetic stand and stuck it in a chuck It'd be better if i had something that was a diameter of a um yeah, call it instead of trying to use a chuck you know you'd be more accurate but uh, from side to side you know it's on zero there you spin around okay probably have to take my word for it what are we on around zero there and then pretty much again from front to rear and you get eh, we're showing about three there there yeah so it's uh it's within the uh, working parameters for what I need it for again if I get a better gauge uh, I may do a little bit of homework and look for them I actually have some gauges I just got to get some better stands I have this one which is more sensitive and uh, easier to kind of sweep across and lift the needle up when you're trying to work with it you know where that one is uh, falls into the gap a little bit more but that's got a totally different um, tail end on it so I'm gonna look into some shafts for that one and uh, yeah, here's here's the magnetic base style setup and uh, I have a gauge for that one too I don't know what to do with it but uh, again now I'm now I'm trying to dig into all my hoard for uh, all the, the mechanical tools kind of deal really a uh, high-end uh, level there's another one over here and keep hurdy. Super sensitive too. It's ridiculously sensitive. I didn't uh, get too much into that worrying about making the machine level because I I, I kind of want to if I have to skirt it around the floor a little bit if I need to push it forward or back or whatever I'm doing. So I'm not going to bolt it down in its location um, and get it you know dead nuts level. As long as everything is square and level, uh, square and plumb to itself, that's all I'm concerned about. You know. So. I think I'm going to wrap it up. It's probably a fairly long video here, but uh, that pretty much gets it all kind of squared away, cleaned up, gave me some education about it. 
Um, it's kind of nice to kind of get in and figure out how everything works, how all the dials work, how the locks work, clean everything, uh, you know what oil's going on, do a bit of homework, you know, that kind of setup. So uh, I got my stuff organized up on the shelf. My machine is uh, fairly cleaned up. I'm not worried about the dirt on the back there. I may scrub it a little bit, but uh, I kind of like to show their age. They don't need to be all painted up for me. But that's it. A little baggy over the uh, controller for it. Just keep the dust out of it because I got a sander right next to it. But in a small shop, you gotta work with what you got, right? That's it. And I, I put the dial indicator on here. I have 14 thousandths uh, play in the table and 12 thousandths uh, from left to right. So I am happy with that. That is uh, not far off from where it was when it was new. I think seven. So I'm five, six thou out from there and I can live with that. A lot better than a hundred thousand. Let's just, just definitely keep it in perspective. I'm liking it. Now we just gotta start making some uh, nice uh, bicycle engine parts with it and uh, make it earn its keep, what do you say? Alright guys, again thanks for watching, comment, subscribing. Take care.